Hi, this is Tom from SailThalia.com. Today's video is about safety on board a cruising sailboat. I'm going to go through with you a number of examples of how we treat safety as a priority on board Thalia, some of the products that we use and some of the techniques to make sure that um, people don't fall overboard or if they do we have a good way to rescue them. And um, as you'll see, I start off with uh, you know, straightforward things like life jackets and uh, related techniques of, of using life jackets. So um, I'll admit that this is probably not the most sexiest topic out there for boating. You know, won't see us heeled over or flying a big spinnaker and all that. Um, but I hope you do agree that safety is important. Um, it does contribute to you relaxing and having a good time. Um, the rest of the time when you are sailing and uh, or at anchor or during a storm it's nice to know that you've thought through uh, various safety procedures and uh, techniques and products so that you can relax a little bit more uh, when you might otherwise be stressed and worried about um, somebody getting hurt so here goes like I said we're gonna start off with life jackets I recorded uh, these segments over the summertime. Uh, right now it's uh, November in New England and it's um, kind of dreary out so I figured this would be a good opportunity to go back in time to some of the more sunnier days in the summer and uh, check out some of the techniques for safety on board. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the safety uh, devices and procedures we have on the boat. Uh, the first one is directly visible to you. It's my life jacket. So we wear these whenever we're underway on the boat. This is an inflatable life jacket, a lot better than anything else you can get that would be like a, a, a non-inflatable. This is the way to go for most people when they're boating. So it's got a canister inside here. Um, it's automatic if I go overboard. There's a little tablet that dissolves in the water, and that, and that um, once that dissolves, the uh, little tank of air fills up the um, buoyancy in the life jacket, and I'm good to go. I can also do a little thing on the side here and pull that as a jerk to inflate. The same kind of concept is what you see on an airline flight, um, and there's a tube in here, actually, too, that you can blow into to inflate it as well. Inside here we have a, a thing we added on to, it's a little strobe light uh, that will activate when the life jacket is inflated or you can pull a little tab off of it, so that's kind of nice. And uh, eventually I, I have the two more devices that are AIS beacons uh, that we're, we're going to put on both our life jackets. I haven't rigged that up yet, but that's another thing that can be added on to here, so that will send out uh, an emergency AIS transmission that can be picked up on other uh, boats that can receive AIS, including this boat, which is the most important. So that's a nice safety feature too that we'll hope to add soon. This one has a, this is an offshore style uh, life jacket, play life jacket. It's got a harness here, D harness, that's meant to connect a tether to, which I'll show you in a minute. But very important to have this if you plan to go in anywhere offshore. So that's the life jacket. Other things we've got on board the boat here in the cockpit is a horseshoe buoy. You see a lot of these around. Um, this just mounts on a bracket that was already on the boat. Horseshoe buoy right there. We've got a little line here that it connects to um, this floating strobe light. Get a better angle than there for so That's the floating strobe light. It's upside down right now. Um, when it uh, gets pulled off the boat with the horseshoe buoy and goes in the water, it floats upright, and when it floats upright, the strobe is activated. So it's got a big kind of lantern-sized battery inside there to run that strobe light. So that's all one unit. That goes overboard if somebody falls in, especially at night. We can find them at night. Um, at one point, I had a man overboard pole when we did when we were sailing offshore, coastal offshore. So we don't have that rigged up right now for the Great Lakes. It's a big tall pole, the flag on top, that is all connected to this. So that whole thing goes overboard. The horseshoe buoy, the pole, the light goes in the water. 
for the swimmer, the person going overboard to go to, and also for you to, to know roughly where the person fell in the water. So that's all that man overboard equipment. Got a couple more things here. This is a life sling uh, rescue system. You see these little autumn boats. Um, so inside here is kind of a U-shaped flotation uh, belt. Kind of, you can see it going around this person here. And then a long tether that comes out here and is uh, tied to the boat. So the idea is you would open it up, <laughs> pull that yellow handle up, and that's the the buoy that goes around the person in the water. And the nice part about that is that it then is connected to the boat. So if the person can swim over and grab onto that, then you've got a connection to them via that line to the boat. And you can pull them in to the boat. Um, as shown on this picture, you can also use it to hoist them out of the water if they're not able to, to climb up out of the water themselves, or if you've got high freeboard on your boat. Um, Thalia is a nice boat for rescuing people out of the water because we've got this nice swim step here. The fenders are a little bit in the way, but you can see it's just a couple inches off the water there with a ladder. So we can eat more easily rescue people. Um, boats that don't have a swim platform or a swim ladder like that, you have to end up pulling them three, four, five feet off the water to get them over the tow rail and into the boat, which is a very difficult job. Um, so that's a nice feature of this boat. So again, that's the life sling system. Uh, we haven't had to use it yet. The only thing I had to do was replace the outside bag here this year because the other one was 10 years old. The bag was deteriorating. Um, and the other thing I have here that I don't really see on a lot of boats, but I like a lot, it's, it's a rescue, rescue throw rope. Very simple thing, didn't cost a lot. Um, inside the bag here, is um, somebody do this one-handed? Is is uh, end of a rope. So you've got a little loop on the, on here. You can put around your wrist and hold on to it. And there's I don't know maybe 25 feet of line, 30 feet of line inside here. And the idea is you just you throw this out to somebody, and they catch it. And again, you've got a connection to them. You can pull them into the boat. Um, the other thing, nice thing you can do by this is you can. Once you get all the rope out of here, if you don't make it on the first throw, you can fill this bag up with water and get more weight to your throw again to throw it further. So, really simple device, um, doesn't take up a lot of room, and um, is a handy little safety feature. Okay, I talked before about the uh, automatically inflating life jackets and um, how we put some additional things inside. So. Um, it's going to show you what that looks like and also it's a good idea to kind of open these up once in a while make sure that things are in order. So it's this Velcro together. Um, here inside is the uh, compressed air <coughs> and the trigger mechanism with a little green pin in that. And by pulling this it launches a pin or um, breaks open basically the compressed air and that inflates this yellow bag uh, that gives it buoyancy. So these things need to be checked and replaced periodically. You can get kits for these and um, back in here is a spring so when this uh, arm is pulled it releases a spring and, it, and that's what punctures the um, air canister here and releases the air. So inside this spring holding the spring from going down and puncturing it is also a little capsule that uh, disintegrates in the water and when that um, little capsule disintegrates then it opens it up automatically. That's the automatic portion of this as opposed to the manual portion. And that little um, uh, capsule needs to be checked and replaced periodically as well. So that's this side and on the other side I'm going to make sure that I don't automatically or manually pull that lever at the same time. I've had these things go off once we were sitting in the uh, cockpit and all of a sudden we heard a pop and just from um, the heat and one uh, life jacket sort of falling over another it, it pulled that pin just enough to be able to launch it. So inside here is the um, little tube that you can use to manually <coughs> inflate the life jacket and we've also added a strobe here 
and you just kind of it's linked to this bag so hopefully when the bag inflates it'll pull this off but you can pull it off manually and with any luck it looks like the battery might be dead so actually a good thing that we check this um, that strobe oh I'm sorry I need to press it right here in order to test it there we go so that strobe lights working and once this tab is pulled off of there then it'll automatically go so that's the innards of these life jackets pretty common kind of life jacket um, inflatable life jacket and uh, later on I'm going to try to find a way to put in that AIS uh, man overboard beacon thing. It's ideally supposed to go inside the pocket here somewhere. But that's the basic inner innards so far. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, for safety, the other thing that we have is um, these AIS beacons that go attached to your um, life jacket. So uh, I'm going to show you that here. This is a uh, box you're going. It's a product from ACR called AIS Link MOB. Um, I bought two of these, one for, for Karen, one for I. And uh, what they do is they attach, they're fairly small, and they attach to your um, inflatable life jacket and tuck inside the pocket and are supposed to automatically uh, release and activate when the life jacket gets inflated. So I've got this, they've got a whole bunch of parts in here, lanyards and clips and, oh God, lots of things. and a, very brief instructions really you have to go on their website to figure out the rest it was a little more involved than I thought and there's some programming I think to it as well you got to put your MMSI number in there and some other stuff so um, uh, haven't quite gotten to that although I really wanted to it's probably more beneficial for offshore in the ocean but um, still you know a lot of places here in the Great Lakes are you know if you go overboard it's cold um, you're gonna want to be rescued right away so the idea with this thing, um, they've made other types of beacons that go on you. Um, one's like a little mini EPIRB. Um, <clears throat> this one I like better because, as I said, it sends. It's got a little antenna that um, comes out once it's activated, and it's got a battery that lasts like 24 hours, and it sends out your AIS, your position through the AIS frequency. So, and it's a special. Um, emergency uh, AIS beacon signal so that the the big boat can receive that other boats that are in the area it doesn't obviously go as far as a normal um, AIS transmission from our boat or from a big ship but it's at least you know, I would think at least a couple miles and um, other boats will see that as well so like our chart plot are set up to show any emergency AIS um, transmissions. They call them AIS targets te technically because that's really what it is, is it's a target, you know, their ship is a, a target on your screen. Um, but those are pretty nice and they also, it, this also comes with a, a strobe on it as well. So the only challenge is going to be finding room inside the sleeve of the life jacket to hold it because right now it's packed pretty tight. So that's the AIS beacon and I would highly recommend getting one. All right, so next thing I want to talk to you about is uh, getting back again to this light jacket and this, uh, this harness here. Uh, this is for attaching a tether to. So I'll show you uh, a little bit about the tethers. There's all different types of tethers. Uh, we've got these tethers here um, mounted on this line here. We use this line to store extra tethers and also to, um, to hold us in the cockpit. So the idea here is it's got a little pin here. Um, and you attach that around the harness, and this end's attached to the boat. And so now, when I'm in the cockpit here, and this is the reason why we put this line here, um, is that I can work all around the cockpit. I can go over here to the winches and grind winches. Um, I can go on the other side and protect it back and forth. I don't have to worry about anything with this tether being in the way. Um, but it's preventing me from going overboard. So I can only go out here so far. I could probably fall a little bit over the lifeline or into the lifeline, but I wouldn't go overboard, which is the idea. But yet it's given me great mobility. And so in really rough weather, what we would do is we'd actually um, connect in the companionway. As we come up the companionway, we'd have one of these tethers here 
were ready to go and we tether right in before we actually even stepped into the cockpit. So then you're completely protected and then vice versa, you, when you're ready to go off watch, you can actually step onto the companionway and then unhook, unconnect your tether at that point. So, that's this. Like I said, there's, they make all different types. They have ones that some people feel are more uh, stronger or less able to be tripped. And you know, some people don't like these because you could actually kick it or something like that. It could get hung up on another piece of metal and push open. Um, this thing here could actually be pushed open there by something else. But I, I think it's also important to have something easy to attach to. So it's a really quick attachment there. So that's the tether. You can get these in um, a single line like this. You can get a double tether so there's another piece that comes off of this that you can attach to some other place before you disconnect here so you're always connected someplace. But this is the simplest one. So that's that. Um, that allows somebody in the cockpit to be always secure. And again, we use this line here to store the extra tethers so they're ready to be used. So the other place that we use tethers for is um, over at the helm. That spot over by the companionway is too far away for me to actually be steering at the helm. And so what we do for that, if I don't make you too dizzy, is we have a little anchor point down here on the floor right below at the helm. So I latch onto that, it's super strong. I'm right here in the cockpit behind the wheel and I can steer and do whatever I want and reach over one side to another, but I'm not going to go very far. Um, so if you're moving from the steering position to controlling the winches or sitting in the cockpit, you have to disconnect and go over there. But the nice part about this is once you're on watch and you're standing here most of the time when you're on watch, you're secured and all set with this strong attachment point on the, on the uh, cockpit sole there. So and then the last real purpose of these tethers um, is in combination with what's called a jack line. Jack line, which is this blue strap that runs down the deck there all the way here and attaches right here back on the uh, pulpit is, um, you see a moth is hiding in there. Um, so this runs all the way up to the bow. And the idea here is, and again, this is called a jack line, is that if I need to go forward, up and do something up on the deck, I clip on here, and now I can walk up on the deck. And yes, I could fall overboard with this, but I'm only going to go so far. I'm not going to float away. Um, I would hopefully be helped by another crew member. So I can walk up and you'll see this little tether kind of falls right along next to me, and I can walk inside of the shrouds. I have to go underneath the jib sheet, but I can get all the way up here to the bow and still be somewhat safe. Again, the idea is that if you fall overboard and you drift away, the chances of you being rescued is pretty slim, especially at night. So you want to stay with the boat and um, ideally you don't even really want to come up on deck when it's windy or stormy. But jack lines give you a way to do that that's somewhat safe. So you can see it just slides right along the way here. And I climb underneath the jib sheet. And away I go. And I can come all the way back in here. Another piece of safety equipment we have is a life raft, and um, I'll show you where we have that stowed. It's in a, a cockpit locker here, on the port side, and right down inside there is the case um, that has the life raft inside it. So that's where we store it. Um, it is called a valise style. Uh, life raft, there's two different types. There's that one which has a soft outside, kind of like a duffel bag uh, exterior to it. And then they have a hard cover type that is intended to be mounted on the deck somewhere. 
So those are the two types. There's pros and cons to each. Um, we, at the time, really didn't have a great spot that I wanted to drill holes and mount the, the mounting rack and all that for the hardcover life raft on the deck. So I got this model. We had space in our cockpit lockers. And actually underneath me here is kind of another potential storage area for a life raft. Um, we've got some cockpit uh, stereo speakers down there that wouldn't make it quite wide enough to get a, the, the uh, unit in there. But they do say for these soft pack ones, or soft exteriors, to make sure that they're in a dry location. And this definitely underneath me would not be dry, um, whereas it is dry as a locker. So again, there's pros and cons to each. Uh, this one we have is a little easier to find a place to stow. Uh, with a hard cover one, like I said, you have to mount it somewhere on the deck. Um, some people don't like that option as well because it's a little more prone to theft. They're very expensive, um, and so you run the risk of theft, whereas if it's in a locker, you don't have the risk for that. Some people don't like the ones that you stow away in a locker because they're harder to get out and they can't be set up to automatically deploy. So if you're in a real hurry, I agree, uh, the deck mounted ones would be better for that. Um, in most cases you read about, it's not like a, a real sudden emergency that they have to have the life raft deployed immediately. Um, you usually have a little bit of time, um, at least time enough to go into a locker, grab it, and pull it out. Now, the way it works is you have a lanyard on it, you tie the lanyard to the boat, you throw the thing overboard, and it jerks the uh, air canister in it and inflates it, very similar to uh, the life raft I'm wearing, uh, life preserver I'm wearing right now. So that's the concept. It, it, it self inflates um, once it gets that pull on it, and then you can manually inflate it as well. Um, so you've got that, you've got the time involved to do that. Um, but again, most of the stories I've read, they actually encourage you before you get in the life raft that you, the, the whole story is that you actually step up into the life raft, meaning that your boat you're on is literally, truly sinking momentarily because so many cases they find the boat with nobody on board and they never find the people on the life raft. So you want to stay on board your boat as long as possible. That indicates to me that you're usually going to have a little bit of time. Um, so that's the way we went with that and that's uh, it's a very helpful thing. Most offshore races, I pretty much I think every offshore race will require you to have a life raft. We kind of try to follow those safety rules for offshore racing. So if um, they require it, we think it's a good idea, obviously. Um, I think it's, just, it's, a, it's a good thing to have. We just got ours repacked. You have to do that every couple years. It depends on the manufacturer and the rules. Uh, but we had it uh, repacked, check for leaks, uh, make sure everything's working okay. Back to the other so it's good for another three, four, five years, I think. All right, so that's the life raft. Go through that and call the people you have on the list to figure out, hey, is this person 
really out there in the Atlantic sailing or was it was an accidental um, discharge of the EPIRA. So that's the EPIRA, but inside the bag here, um, we've got a bunch of other stuff. We've got an emergency flashlight. Um, we've got an inflatable flag, something you can signal with. Uh, it's the international distress symbol flag. I've got an old GPS unit. This is the first GPS unit we had we sailed. Um, and it's got, interesting enough, it's actually on, so I must have pushed a button to turn it on now. But it's Garmin, a Garmin GPS unit, and you know, it'll tell you your lap long and that kind of stuff. You need to tell some rescue person about that. Um, along with that, a bunch of batteries, uh, AA batteries that go with the GPS unit. This was a mounting bracket for the keeper. Don't really need that in here, I guess. Looks like I got another distress flag. Um, not sure what the heck this thing is. This is what the bag it looks like to hold stuff. Um, emergency survival blanket, one of these sort of space, space age kind of things. Uh, keep you warm. Um, I've got another little flashlight that looks like a little strobe on top. Some of this stuff came with the bag when I bought it. Um, Sort of small, but maybe it would be helpful. Um, here's another. Um, this probably was probably intended to be mounted on a light jacket, but it's a another strobe light that you can use um, for on your person or on the life raft. The life raft itself has a strobe light. Uh, brackets. So the rest of the stuff in here is a bunch of flares. Um, Looks like I, I tossed some extra flares in here. This maybe what came with the kit actually. So some parachute flares, some regular flares, and there's a, a smoker as well. Um, and then I've got a list here of um, everything that was done to the life raft and what's put in the life raft. This came from the last time that we had it uh, be packed and certified just over the winter time. So I threw that in there. So. That's your ditch bag. Probably the only other thing that's missing from here is a VHF radio and handheld VHF radio. I think the thought we probably had was that we could grab that. We have we have two on board, so we really want to keep those available on the board. We don't want to have one dedicated in the ditch bag. Uh, but that would be the other thing to have is to have a VHF radio with us in the bag. So that's your ditch bag. Okay, together with the life raft I showed you and the ditch bag, um, the other thing that's kind of related to the ditch bag is a flare kit. So this is a kit that we have on board. Um, it's an offshore uh, kit for um, you know the, the appropriate safety flares on that for doing offshore work. It says offshore fishing vessel, but it applies to um, any kind of vessel work offshore. Um, this is a big kit. It's got a lot of stuff in there. You, some people might be familiar with sort of more narrower uh, kits that are sort of like a large book or encyclopedia book. And those have a set of sort of pistol flares in them. And uh, that's good for sort of coastal sailing and um, notify people of emergency that way. But this kit has a lot more in it. So I'll show you, um, I won't go through everything in here, but the concept, general concept is you've got um, some parachute flares. This is a red rocket parachute flare. When you buy the kit, it obviously has all the stuff in it and it has a certain number each kind of type of device. So that this might have like maybe three parachute flares. Um, this is a regular handheld flare. 
first aid kit. So I've got a first aid kit here. Um, this says Marine Medical, but you know, I think most first aid kits would work fine. Um, it's got the usual things you would expect in here. Uh, I'm not going to fully open it because it all fall out of me, but band-aids and stuff for um, small cuts and uh, I think there's some used Dermabond in here before. Uh, got a lot of gauzes and all that stuff for, for minor injuries and sutures and stuff like that. So you want to make sure you have some kind of um, first aid kit on board. We use it pretty regularly actually, a lot of band-aid kind of stuff or antibiotic. Uh, but this is a good thing to have. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed those segments around safety. Certainly there's a lot more that uh, could be discussed, but I was trying to hit the, the key items there. And um, as always, I would love your feedback. So if you have any comments, suggestions, any kind of feedback, feel free to comment on my YouTube channel or our blog, which is at www.salethalia.com. Look forward to hearing from you and have a good day.